everybody welcome to my channel my name is Louisa how's everybody doing I cannot believe that here it is it's almost August and I haven't been to the beach yet but you know what it's not too late according to the governor of Virginia the beaches are open in my state and I can actually go I just have to make sure that I maintain six foot distance and not be in large groups but other than that the beaches are open and I'm planning to go to the beach at least once this year so what's the next best thing when you can't go to the beach? Uh, you can stay home and make beautiful beachy necklaces and that's what we're going to do today. So the main focus of today's tutorial is going to be how to do a messy wrap around a large bead and uh, we received a big 14 millimeter ivory colored porcelain bead in the July bargain bead box and a lot of people didn't know what to do with them. Some people used them as is because they were gorgeous beads but I personally did not like a, a huge bead with nothing on it just plain ivory color so I decided to do a messy wrap on one of my designs and today I'm going to show you how to do that wrap it's very easy uh, we're going to use some leather cord we're going to use some of the other beads that came in the subscription for July uh, but if you don't have those beads that's okay you can still do it just use different beads I do so want to show you my process I'm going to go ahead and start the tutorial from beginning to end from the designing of the necklace all the way through to the completion of the necklace and I want to show you the process so anyway guys without further ado let's go ahead turn the camera around and we'll get started all right, so we're going to design something and we're going to start out with these two focal beads as you you can see these were from the uh, July bargain bead box the name of the box was beachcomber uh, this is a porcelain round bead in an ivory color and this is a lampwork lentil bead with some um, tropical waves um, you know a little tropical wave pattern on there the colors are blue and green as you can see but we're going to focus mostly on the blue I don't think I'm going to pull any of the green into the design I'm just going to leave it as is uh, but mainly the ivory and the blue is what I'm going to focus on. So these are the two uh, focal pieces for the necklace. And so now I need to have something that coordinates with these two colors. So I went into my stash and I found these beautiful Dragon's Vein Agate beads. They're a really pretty blue color and it was the same kind of blue that's in this bead here. So I thought it would coordinate pretty well. But I'm not going to use the, the bright ones I don't think. I think I'm going to use the lighter ones. So these are going to be included in the design. In addition to the blue, I need something light. I found these light colored Amazonite beads and um, the Amazonite strand that I had had multicolors. It was blues and creams and um, beiges. So I went in there and I just picked the ones that were the lighter in color and um, they seem to coordinate really well with this ivory porcelain bead. So I'm going to include these in the design. All right, so let's go ahead and arrange them the way I think they would look the best. Um, I think I'm going to do this kind of design. Okay. And then let me go ahead and grab some of these uh, dragon veins, dragon's vein beads. I think what I'll do is, um, let's see. I'm going to use the lighter blue color. And I'm going to have maybe three on either side of this ivory colored bead and these other two further up the necklace. So it looks something like this. Okay. Now I'm going to need some more ivory colored beads. So I think what I'll do is um, incorporate some of these, incorporate some of these beautiful uh, cube beads that came in the July box and I'm going to create some dangles right below this focal bead here maybe I'll use some chain and I also want to pick up the blue so I think I'll use the um, the blue bicones that we received in the marine blue iris color here they are so I'm going to add some additional dangles with these uh, little bicones hanging from them and now for the findings, I want—I definitely want to use the bronze that came with the box. And I didn't have a whole lot left after I did my uh, designs, uh, but I do have a few of the bead caps. So I think I'll put some bead caps on either side of this arrangement here in the bronze color. Okay. And then I also want to use the corrugated beads that we received, and I'm going to put them on either side of these uh, light colored beads. 
okay because I, I do want to use leather leather cord so I'm going to crimp these down and I'll show you that process in a little bit okay and then I also found this really cute starfish in my collection I think I got it on bargain bee box or bee box bargain um, but I'm not sure but it's the same bronzy color so maybe I'll hang this down here and I do want to add some bead caps to this focal and then I am going to wrap this I'm going to do a messy wire wrap on that bead in a bronze colored um, wire 22 gauge so this is the basic design of what we're going to do today and then um, the cord is going to end here and then I'm going to uh, add some chain for the rest of the necklace so I do need to pick that chain out so let me go ahead and look at my stash I'm not going to make you go through the process of that because that's a little bit painful but um, let me go ahead and look for some chain and I'll be right back right, so I found some chain let me move my board down so above this bead here we're going to um, attach chain and I selected this chain here I think I did get this on beadbox bargains it's like an oval link as you can see relatively delicate it's not too heavy of a chain so I'm going to attach that at the top of the necklace and then the little dangles I'm going to actually use this chain which I got on Amazon and it's a pack of I don't know how many chains maybe 10 it's relatively delicate so I'm going to um, snip off little bits of this fine chain for the dangles these dangles right here I do want to show you these cord ends I got these on Amazon and as you can see they come in different colors we're going to obviously be using the bronze ones and these are the tiny ones I think they're they come in two sizes we're going to be using the smaller ones today because uh, the cord the leather cord is going to be the one millimeter size cord 1.0 millimeter and I got this on leatherusa.com in a bronzy color okay so this is what we're going to be using and we're going to be using some crimps as well um, these come in different colors as well and um, I got these on Amazon as well and uh, we're going to be using the bronze colored ones I'm always reluctant to tell you what tools to use because everybody has um, different ways of doing things uh, but I'm going to go ahead and list all the pliers that I used today down in the uh, description but basically your basic tools flat nose pliers these are tapered flat nose pliers I, I definitely want to tell you about these and I'll tell you you know once we get to using them because these are very important round nose pliers, uh, needle nose pliers, flush cutters. I'd also want to get some nylon coated pliers and I think that's about it. There could be something else that I'm leaving out, I don't know, but like I said, you know, I'll list everything down below um, in the description. Okay, let's go ahead and begin by cutting ourselves a 12 inch piece of leather cord. Okay, that's going to be for this portion of the necklace all right and then we're also going to need a smaller piece for this portion and I'll explain that later on just any scrap piece this is maybe eight inches but you could probably get away with less than this um, so anyway you know leather cord is very cheap guys so don't be afraid uh, to cut yourself a little bit more than you think you need all right so that's the first step next you're going to need about three feet of um, wire and for that we're going to be using 24 gauge wire in a, in a vintage bronze color by beadsmith tarnish resistance so i'm going to go ahead and cut that and i'll be right back all right here it is and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to thread the uh, large bead onto the wire bring it to the center just like this okay and give it a little bend right there so that it hugs the bead a little bit okay and so here's what we're going to do guys we're going to get the flat nose pliers these right here and we are going to kink the wire all the way down the length each length okay so I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera so it doesn't take too long but basically you're just grabbing it like this and giving it a little bend and then grabbing it again and giving it a little bend so it, so it looks kind of like a zigzag just like this okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do both ends and I'll be right back okay I'm back and I've kinked the wire as you can see it's not perfect okay each little bend or each little segment is maybe a quarter of an inch sometimes more sometimes less 
don't get too hung up on it because it's supposed to be a very organic and random uh, kind of design. Okay. And I did leave a little bit of a, a straight end, maybe three inches at each end, okay? And I did give it a little twist right here. So you do want to do that. You want to secure it by giving the wires a little twist, all right? So now that you've done that, um, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping. There's no signs to it. It's really very, very simple. You just lay down your wire using your thumbs, okay? Lay it down so that it's flat up against the bead, just like this, and wrap it around. And when you get to a junction when the, where the two wires meet, what you want to do is you want to give it a little twist, not much, just a little twist, and then lay down the wire again. Okay, you do want to lay it down and squish it down as you work with it because um, the whole purpose or the whole goal is to encage the bead with the wire flat up against it. Okay, so you don't want to have any bits sticking out. Now you do want to be mindful of the hole right there because we're going to be inserting leather cord through that hole. So you want to make sure there's no obstruction in there, okay, uh, or obstruction in front of it I should say. So just keep laying it down all the way around the bead, just like this. Don't be too perfect, okay? This is a very organic process, so it doesn't have to be perfect. The more random it is, the nicer it's going to look, okay? But you do want to try and get that wire to cover the spaces as much as possible, okay? Just like this. Lay it down, flatten it out as you go along. And then when you get to a junction, give it a little twist to secure the wire a little bit more. And move it into the spaces as much as you can so that it's completely encaged, okay? And as you can see, it happens pretty fast. Okay, and I'm going to give it a little twist right here. A couple of twists. And this is what you should have, okay? Something like this. Alright, so now basically you're going to use your fingers and move that wire around, squish it down as much as you can, move, move it into the spaces, you can manipulate it, and the more you manipulate the wire, the harder it gets because you're work hardening it, that's what wire does. And I like to use my fingers because this is a coated tarnish resistant wire, and if you use anything hard on it, it may take the, t uh, the finish off. So you do have to be careful with that. But if you see a bit of wire that's kind of straight and you want to manipulate it, you can very carefully go in there with some pliers. Now these are the tapered nose flat part pliers that I was telling you about. You can come in here very carefully and manipulate it and add some more kinks if you need to. Okay, just like this. And if you do that, it actually hot, um, it actually tightens the wire even more around that bead. But you do have to be careful, like I said, because you don't want to take the finish off the wire. Okay. So if you can do this with your fingers, it's preferable. because that way you won't have any damage. So here I have a little space. I'm going to move in, add a little kink. you do want it to look organic, okay? 
that's looking pretty good so far as you can see so another thing I like to do is I like to use a block to smush down some of the areas that stick out too much okay so let me show you how I do that so it's a metal block and then you do want to put down some kind of protection okay and very gently smush down that bead onto the the uh, cardboard okay very very gently smush it down move it around okay something like this Alright, and so now what I'm going to do here, this, this bit of wire is already secured around this one as you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that. This bit of wire I'm going to thread underneath one of these. And let me go ahead and pull it through gently. Okay, so it's anchored. So it's anchored by the hole and this one's anchored by this hole. All right. So now that you have the wire wrapped around, you get your leather cord, the longer piece, the one that you cut that's 12 inches and you thread it through. Just like this. Okay, bring it all the way down so the bead is in the middle. So that it's centered. And then get your wire the one that's by this hole and wrap it around this end. Not too many times, okay, just a, a couple of times. And the same thing with this one. Wrap it around this end of the wire. it's tight and manipulate the wire further if you need to so that it's sitting just the way you want it okay all right so once you've wrapped the ends you can go ahead and snip the ends leaving about less than a quarter of an inch something like that because you're going to take this end and you're going to shove it into the hole so that it doesn't stick out okay just like this same thing with this end snip it and then using your pliers I use the needle nose for this you want to insert the end of that wire into the hole. Okay, just smoosh it right into that hole so that it's not sticking out. And that's basically it, guys. Okay, and like I said, the more you manipulate the wire, the harder it gets, but that's basically it. So now that bead is anchored onto the leather cord. All right, so let's move on to the next step. For the next step, we're going to be using 22 gauge wire, and it's beadsmith, and it's the vintage bronze color in a tarnish resistant finish. And you're going to snip off a little piece of wire, maybe 10 inches, not too much. All right, so I have my piece of wire and we're gonna do, this process is kind of uh, backwards a little bit. We're gonna work from the bottom up. So this is the focal that's gonna have the dangles. So the first thing we're gonna do is form a large loop, okay? And uh, it doesn't have to be too large, but you wanna try to make a loop so that you can hang dangles from it, okay? So grab the wire at the end, give it a little kink, and then position your uh, pliers this way, okay? and give it a little turn 
and wrap it around. Here's the loop and I always like to use these crimping pliers to grab the loop with and obviously guys I don't use the grooves I use the, the nose the tip which is flat and it just grabs really well so I, I like to use these when I do the uh, wraps and I'm not going to do too many if you followed my videos you'll know that I only do maybe two or three at the most but for this one I'm just going to do two two wraps and I'm going to snip it now it's going to be hiding underneath the bead cap, so it's not critical that you smoosh down the sharp end. And I'll explain what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to insert it into the bead cap like this. So it's half hidden inside that bead cap. All right, so once you've got that, um, go ahead and put the uh, bead cap that's going to be on the bottom of the focal bead. Add your focal bead just like this. Okay, and then add the bead cap that's going on the top of the focal. So this is what you should have. And again, you're going to do a loop at the top, and I'm not going to do a very big loop. Okay, so kink it, wrap the wire around the top nose, continue wrapping around, so it's like this and then grab the loop with a good set of pliers and then with the second pair of pliers do how many wraps you want to do okay you want to make sure the bead cap is nice and snug once you do that snip off the excess wire and definitely tuck in any sharp bit, okay? So this is basically what you should have, and we can move this around later on. Make sure the loops are straight, use your pliers, straighten them out, and make sure they're facing the same direction as well, okay? And this is what you should have, and this is gonna go underneath this bead. So now before we do the dangles, we're going to attach the speed. Okay, it's just a lot easier to attach it when there are no dangles uh, hanging down. So for that, you're going to need the smaller piece of leather that we cut. Okay, the leather, we're going to thread it through the loop just like this. Okay, and then we're going to thread it through the loop again. Just like this. So this is what you should have. Okay. And now we're going to take both of these ends and thread them through the leather loop. And then you want to pull it so that it forms a little knot at the top of that loop. So this is what you should have, okay? So we didn't have to do this, but I think it adds to the necklace. I think it just it adds a little touch when you wrap the leather around your loop just like this, okay? Okay, so this is going to hang around the bottom of this bead here. We're going to attach it using the fold over cord ends, okay? So it's going to hang around the bottom and I'm going to just place it here, eyeball it, to see exactly where I need to uh, attach the fold over cord end. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to need this much leather to wrap around the bottom of that focal. And everybody's going to be different, guys, okay? Everybody's going to be different. Mine is about three quarters of an inch. All right, so the fold over cord end looks like this, okay? And you're going to be placing the leather right inside there, and you're going to fold it, fold it over. And you don't need glue, by the way, okay? If you're asking yourself, do I need glue? The answer is no, you don't need glue, okay? You can fold these uh, little flaps over and it does a really good job of holding um, the leather cord. So now I'm gonna place a mark where the three quarter of an inch point is, okay? And, then, and I'm just gonna use a marker. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I placed my little mark. I don't know if you can see that. You can barely see it, but it's right there, okay? That's where I'm going to attach the fold over cord end. So you simply take your cord end and place it where you marked the leather. 
okay just like this can you guys see that all right so I've got the mark at the top end of the fold over cord end all right now this is a little tricky because you need to fold each flap over you know and it's better to do one than the other so basically fold it over and then you do the other end Smush it down the best way you can so that it holds that leather. All right, once you have that attached, you can see where I've attached it. You're going to go ahead and snip off this end as close to the top of that uh, fold as you can. Let me use my favorite ones. These are my Lindstrom's. These are really, really good. I use these for everything. And then just get in there the best way you can. and snip off the cord. Okay, so now you have one done. All right, so now we're gonna do the other side and take your flush cutters and snip off the excess cord. Okay, as close to the uh, top of that fold as you can. All right, and this is what you have. Okay, once you have that, you can go ahead and thread it onto your necklace. So we're going to do one side, and these loops are exactly one millimeter. So if you're using leather cord that's more than that, it's not going to work out. <laughs> so you want to make sure that your leather cord fits through these loops. Okay, so. There it is, I've attached it, as you can see. All right, that looks pretty good. Just make sure that when you attach it that the leather cord isn't all twisted up. And we're gonna move on to the next step. The next step is actually pretty easy, guys. Okay, so get your bead cap, put it on, one on each end. These are the ones that came with the uh, bargain bead box for July. I love these, they're absolutely gorgeous. Okay, I think they're about 10 millimeters, something like that. So once you have that, you wanna get your blue beads, the uh, Dragon's Vein Agate. Okay, I threaded on the beautiful uh, Dragon Vein Agate, and I'm gonna finish with a bead cap. Okay, and then you're going to add a corrugated bead after your bead cap, so one on each end. Okay, so this is what we have. Very pretty. Okay, so to hold this in place, I'm going to use some crimp beads, all right, and they the bronze colored crimp beads. So we're going to need a couple of these. We're going to need a lot for the rest of the necklace, but um, Let's just go ahead and put a crimp bead on each end. Okay, so I have a crimp bead on each end, as you can see. And very simply, get some pliers. Make sure that it's snug up against the bead. Smush it down, just like that, okay? And because it's bronze colored, you're not gonna see it too much and you don't need any bead covers or any crimp covers, okay? So that's what you should have and that keeps it in place. All right, so now we're gonna mark where we're gonna um, attach the next set of uh, beads and I'm gonna leave myself about an inch and a half. So let's go ahead and measure it. Bring your two cords together, put them down and then measure approximately where you wanna attach the next crimp. Just make sure that both of them are the same, okay? One inch and a half, something like that. And once again, get your crimps and thread on one side. Move it right onto the mark. 
get your pliers and smush it down. That's one side. And now thread the other, crimp onto the other side. Now before you crimp it, you want to make sure that they're both even, okay, before you actually crimp it. Always double check, okay. So I'm going to crimp it down about there. And that's what we should have. It's pretty level. All right, so now we're going to thread on a corrugated bead, a light colored bead, and these are amazonites, and then another corrugated bead like this, and then we're going to crimp it down using another one of these bronzy colored crimp beads. Bring it all the way down so it's up against the uh, corrugated bead, okay? And smush it down so that holds it in place. Okay, now we're going to do the other side. So now we have this, and now we're going to go ahead and attach the next set. And it's going to be the same distance. We're going to measure one and a half inches. Make sure that the other end is the same. Okay, so one and a half inches. Put them up against each other to make sure that you measured it correctly. Double check your work. You're going to get a crimp bead, bring it down to where your mark is, smush it down, do the other end. Okay, so now we have that, just like this. Same thing corrugated bead, amazonite, another corrugated bead, and then a crimp bead, and then uh, you're going to smush it down, okay, just like this. Same thing on the other end, so now we have th this completed. All right, so now we're going to attach some cord ends to these two pieces, and it's the same cord ends that you used for the bottom component. You're going to insert your cord just place it in there, do one side first, smush it down, make sure it's nice and flat. The first one is always the most challenging and then once you have one done then you can go ahead and smush down the other flap or the other fold I should say just like that okay and then snip off the excess leather and there you go Let's do the other side. I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera and I'll be right back. Alright, so I've done both ends and all we need to do is attach, attach the chain to that. But now we're going to go ahead and work on the bottom focal piece. For that we're going to be using this chain which is a little bit finer than the other chain that we're going to use for the necklace. And I'm going to save actually the uh, lobster claw clasp. I'm going to use it uh, for the necklace. So. Uh, I'm going to save the jump rings and the uh, clasp. So let me go ahead and take that off and I'll be right back. I've removed them and I may not use these jump rings because they don't look very round to me. This one looks okay but this one doesn't. I may use a larger one. I'll, I'll have to wait and see. But anyway, I'm going to put this aside and here's the chain. 
All right, and so we're gonna snip off little bits and they're not gonna be very big. They're gonna be between half an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch, half an inch, and maybe three quarters of an inch at the most, not very big at all. And I'm gonna snip off maybe six bits, different uh, lengths. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. I have about six pieces. I have no idea what length they are. I just kind of snip them and you know, whatever happens, happens guys. And now we're gonna snip off a few pieces of this 24 gauge wire that we used to wrap the, the uh, large bead with. And uh, I'm using it just because it's handy. That's the only reason. I mean, you could potentially use a smaller gauge, maybe 26 gauge, but I'm gonna use, I'm gonna snip off about six three inch pieces, something like that. So now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna form some head pins and you're gonna grab the tip just like this okay at the very end as close to the uh, end as you can grab it and then give it a little turn switch the plies around and continue turning until you get two to three wraps something like that okay something like this Then you're going to take the wire and bend it so that it's pointing away from your pliers. Take it off the pliers, take the end and insert it back through those coils. Pull it through, get your nylon coated pliers and push that floret down so that it goes all the way to the end and it tightens up and this is what it should look like. Grab one of your beads, thread it on just like this okay and you're going to do a little tiny loop and I like to use my little pliers for this place it right at the very end kink it and then switch your pliers around and give it a wrap around that top nose to the, towards the back. And before you close the loop with the wraps, you're going to go ahead and attach the chain to it, okay? So it doesn't matter what piece, any piece of chain. Hook it onto the last link just like this and you're going to move that link into that loop you just made okay just like that grab it with your pliers that you grip with that you like to grip with I like to grip with these like I said earlier get your second pair of pliers and give yourself a couple of wraps okay now these can be a little bit messier, it doesn't matter because they're dangles and they're just going to be dangling down and they're not really going to get caught on anything. But you do want to snip off the excess and you do want to still squash down any bit of wire that is sticking out. Okay, you do want to do that just to be on the safe side. All right, so there's your first dangle. Okay, that's gonna be attached to the loop of this component, this bead, just like this. And now I'm gonna just randomly attach the other beads that I set aside in the same manner, the crystals, the cubes, and this one uh, starfish. Okay, I'll leave this one till the end so that I can show you it's a little bit different because it does have a loop of its own. So perhaps we'll use a jump ring for this. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap these and I'll be right back. So now we're going to attach the little dangles and I have some jump rings here. These are very tiny four millimeter jump rings. All right, so very simply, you're going to open one up and grab whichever dangle. It doesn't really matter. Hook it onto the link, the last link, and then hook it on to 
the loop that you made earlier. Close it up. Okay, there's the first angle. And now we're going to attach the other ones. And you don't have to attach it to that same loop underneath the bead cap. You can attach it to any one of the bits of chain that you're um, using for the dangles. It's totally up to you how you want to do this, okay? Um, what I normally do is I normally put a few down and then I see how it hangs and then I determine at that point um, how I want to proceed, whether I want to continue to attach to the same loop or different loops. But so far so good, okay? All right, and we're just going to continue to attach these cute little dangles. And the whole idea is to um, show some of that bronze chain because I want to emphasize the bronze in this piece, okay? So um, that's what I'm doing. So it's going to be, it's going to have a lot of chain hanging down. That's the look that I'm looking for, okay? Let's see what we what we have so far. All right, this is what we have so far. Pretty cute. And I'm going to continue to attach these dangles. Some are longer than the others. Make sure your jump rings are closed. Okay. And I do want to attach the uh, the starfish charm. So for that, you're just going to use two jump rings. One to attach it to the chain, like this. Okay, so we have it attached to the chain. And then you're going to need a second jump ring to attach it to the lamp bead, lamp work bead. Okay. And you want to try to get it somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to hook it up to the middle of that loop. So this is what it looks like so far. And I have two more to um, hang, these two. So again, you want to grab a jump ring, open it up, and hook it onto the loop. And it's getting pretty full. If your loop is pretty full, what you can do is att attach it to one of the other jump rings, okay? You don't have to attach it to the loop that you initially made. You just want to make sure your jump rings are closed pretty well. Alright, so that's what we have so far. And we have one more. Okay, there it is. And as you can see, the little dangles pick up the lighter colored beads, which is what we want. We want it all to coordinate. Okay, so now that we've got that done, we have everything else done. The only thing we need to do now is attach the chain. So for this, you need to measure how long you want your necklace, okay? It's personal preference, guys. It's however you want it. You can have it uh, choker style, 16 inches, or you can have it a little bit longer, 18 or 20 inches. It's totally up to you. So you're going to measure from this point of the bead to the end of the uh, cord end, okay, to the cord end. You're going to measure that length. And then whatever length you want for your necklace, that's how much chain you're going to cut. So I've got six inches here, okay, and I want my necklace to be 18 inches. So I need to cut myself another three inches to make it nine inches okay nine plus nine equals 18. all right i'm back and i've cut myself two pieces of chain as you can see and very simply i know you guys know how to do this but i'm just going to go ahead and 
show you one side and then I'll do the other side off camera. You're just going to take your jump ring, open it up and hook it through the loop of that cord end, okay? And then take your chain and hook it onto your jump ring and then close it up. It's as simple as that. Make sure it's nicely closed and that's how easy that is. All right, so I'm going to do the other side and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I've attached the chain and the uh, lobster claw clasp as you can see and I did use a larger jump ring um, just because I felt the other one was too flimsy. And here it is guys. I think it looks beautiful, very pretty. I'm loving it. I love the wrap bead. I love the, the bronze colored um, leather. It's real pretty, very beachy and very easy to make. All right, so let me go ahead and put this on and I'll come back to say goodbye. Well, here it is. What do you think? I think it's beautiful. I love this necklace. I love how it hangs. I love how it feels. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope you can make one of your own. And like I said in the beginning, if you don't have these beads, you can use other beads. Um, you know, you don't have to use just an ivory colored bead. You can use different colors. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for subscribing if you're new. And if you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing because that way you'll uh, be able to get my notifications whenever I release videos. I'm looking forward to seeing you again and I will see you in the next video. Bye.